welcome to another up close video so today's one is designers choice again this is number 14 of the designers choice die set and this one is called the exquisite sensor gift box and i just looked up what a sensor was just to make sure um, and it is a container in which incense is burnt during a religious ceremony so um, you can guess it's kind of like a 3d box that has um, clever kind of um, open details within the lid of it to kind of give off that look of a, an actual sensor box that incense could flow out of um, so it is another 3d die set this month but as usual, I can't just show you a way to use it as it's intended. I had to actually make some cards out of it as well. So there will be a sped up video, hopefully tomorrow, um, showing you two greetings cards of using some of the dies from the die set. And then I'll also show you um, a couple of samples of the actual box that it makes. And at the end of the video, I will do a construction as well. It's really not um, difficult to put together, but it's got um, a lot of fold lines in it and um, it might be tricky to figure out which ones um, go inwards and which ones pop outwards and stuff so I thought I'd just show you because it's you know it makes it easier um, and the box I'll be doing at the end of this video is actually um, in a colour scheme that matches the cards that I uh, made in my sped up video as well so um, we have it in a gorgeous envelope again. I really love these pretty envelopes. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I keep keeping them. They're just on my shelf waiting for some kind of uh, project to, to do with them. But I haven't got it in the actual sleeve this month, but you get it in an A5 sleeve with designer's choice down the bottom and it will fit perfectly in any of the A5 binders that Tonic do, whether you get the designer's choice one, which is a beautiful duck egg blue colour, or it will also fit in the orange ones as, that Tonic do as well. So, um, you can see here the kind of um, sort of tapered top box it makes it kind of tapers down the bottom and tapers at the top it's got a gorgeous little handle that goes on it but then there's all these weird like loads of little skinny triangle shapes and stuff and that is the clever um way that it folds and it kind of it really reminds me of like a haunted house when it's put together and i've got a plain one that was my test one and i've actually drawn on it um to kind of show you what i mean about looking like a haunted house but it's got um all these little like details here, they actually stick upwards to create little holes so the kind of incense would flow out of it. Obviously you wouldn't want to actually light something and put it in here because it will be made of card. Um, but it's that kind of, you know, um, idea. Maybe you could put pot pori in it or um, tissue that you've put some essential oils on or something so that the smell can still come out. And you've got all the different panels to decorate it as well. And this is one of the boxes where you have to cut the main portion twice so you can get both pieces out of one A4 piece of card which is really nice and there's a few little uh, spare pieces as well that you know if you were making two boxes you could probably cut some of the panels for the opposite colour of box from the uh, waste pieces from just cutting out one of the base boxes I think that makes sense um, so it's quite an economical box that also looks really pretty I think these would also look um, really cute made into like lanterns as well I mean you could just cut the intricate detail into the front of the box and have a, a tea light a electronic tea light inside to give that kind of illusion or if you're good with um, a scalpel and a ruler you could actually try and like cut sort of six panels out of it and make it look like an old-fashioned um, kind of lantern or one of those street lamp kind of lights as well um, I think that would look really beautiful but you've got Obviously you've got lots of options already in the die set to decorate it too. I'm just trying to give you a few extra things that you might not have uh, thought about as well. So this is the main die. This is the main box die. You can see what I mean about there being a lot of score lines on there. So it might get a little bit confusing for you. That's why I thought I would definitely do um, a construction just to show you exactly which ones fold inwards, which ones fold outwards, where to put your adhesive and everything. So I'll go through that at the end. Um, and it also has this little tab closure up here. And um, the it's really clever actually because the actual shape of the tab is also the inside cutting line of the handle and then you fold the tab over to the other side um, to actually secure it. So when you cut this, you will be cutting one of them off of one side because you do only need one to create the closure for the box as well. So that is the main shape. 
Then, to go inside this, you've got this little piece here, which you can use to decorate the handle, um, and obviously you want to cut it straight into the box, but you can also, um, if you cut it straight into the box, you could place a scrap of card just over that handle portion, and either cut the die into that and then stick that to the box, or you could just use the plain piece from here and back your actual handle that you've die cut this piece into, so the colour would show through the die cuts, depending which way round you want your colours to be you've got a couple of options for that um, you've got the main panels to decorate the sort of three main side shapes um, and obviously you'll need two of each to decorate the box because you need two of the main one and um, so you'll have two of each of these panels you've got this um, kind of odd shaped one here but it's like this because of the closure mechanism and because of the two little um, die cut pieces that kind of stay uh, pointed upwards they don't have a score line on them um, so they kind of poke up and then this uh, decorative panel will sort of like slot behind them so you're not sort of losing any of the detail behind those little um, pieces um, then you've also got the main front panel which is a very versatile die because not only do you get this design to go inside it you've also got another design that says with love and it's got a beautiful little, little um, flower or it could be kind of a, a snowflake as well um, but you also have this central piece I don't know if you can see but that, that shape actually cuts out in the main panel it cuts a hole and then you have four different options of how to decorate that as well. So you can use this one, which is kind of like a stylized flower, or again, it could be, um, you could make it more Christmassy, it could be a poinsettia or some kind of snowflake as well. Then you've got this one that says for you, so you can actually have your sentiment on the front of your box. You've also got enjoy, and the final one is a little heart as well and they're actually all different sizes so you can use the fall away piece that comes out of that panel and back any of these onto them to um, be able to lift them with a, um, a foam pad this one is the exact size of that aperture this one is slightly smaller as you can tell because it is inside here this one the enjoy is the same size as that little sort of snowflakey, poinsettia-y, flowery kind of one. And then this one is a little bit smaller again. But you also get a beautiful heart cutting out the centre of that, which you can use um, to decorate as well. Then, uh, talking of like little pieces to decorate, you get two of these kind of uh, flowery snowflakes. I've been using them as flowers, but if you were going to use these for Christmas projects, they would easily work as snowflakes or poinsettia kind of flowers as well. And then you also have this one, which actually cuts into the card, so it's the same kind of uh, design, but it will give you the sort of cutaway pieces. So you could use, you could cut a few of these, use it as a stencil. Um, I, I don't know if you could actually, like, cut this one. Yeah, you probably could actually. You could cut that larger flower and then actually die cut that in the centre of it to give you the little cut out pieces. But it goes along with um, the other details in the other panel dies, which is really nice. And um, this panel here, you can see in the centre, um, yeah, it's mainly that one, isn't it? Oh, and this panel here, these actually match up with those two um, flowery kind of shapes. So you can actually uh, change up the colours and stick an extra one over the top. And with this one, you can layer a smaller one in the centre. Or this one, just the smaller one, fits over that perfectly. This one is actually slightly different. Um, it's not quite a symmetrical pattern. This like, is smaller along the bottom than it is along the top. But you can stick one of those larger flowers just straight over the top of it to tie them all together as well. Um, and obviously you're getting all of the outside edges for all of these main panels and that's the side panel one. So if you don't like um, these intricate designs or you want to do something a bit more masculine or um, something using up some papers that you've jelly printed or use a load of Nouveau stuff on them, you can just cut out the basic shapes and decorate your box that way. And speaking of all the basic shapes, you also get all the little pieces to decorate the um, folding portion of the top. So this piece, um, the little triangle, actually is one of the more prominent panels um, for this top little feature. So you can just cut that from the same colour color of cardstock that you've backed these pieces with or um, from a pretty uh, holographic piece of cardstock or mirror card. And on one of mine I've actually put the little flower on there as well and I think that adds a nice little decorative element to it. And then you also get all of the little pieces um, to fill in the kind of bits that are folded more inside the box as well. I'll show you on the finished one. 
but I really like that you get those little pieces because they would be really fiddly to try and cut pieces yourself to fit in there. Then, finally, the last thing I haven't shown you is this cute little sentiment down here, which actually says thanks and it's upside down and back to front, um, so you might not be able to read it, but a lovely little rectangle with the word thanks in there as well. So if you didn't want the for you or the enjoy or with love on your box, um, you could leave that panel in or, you know, add a decorative panel and then put the word thanks straight over the top of it. Or if you wanted, you could actually place it on the sloping top panel of the box as well. Or you could even um, sandwich a piece of baker's twine between two of these and have the sentiment on there. And before you stick the two together, you could actually thread it through part of the box as well, which I haven't done, um, like haven't actually specifically put a tag through there. But I can show you how easy it would be to do that as well. So um, that is all of the dies in the die set and I think it's a, a really unusual um, box as well it's very 3D the, it's really cleverly engineered and the way all these bits and pieces fold in different directions it really gives um, an intricate or ornate kind of box which I think would be extremely hard to try and replicate if you were gonna you know start off from scratch trying to figure out this box so um, it's definitely one of the kind of boxes that it's definitely worth having a die set to be able to create it because you know it would be a real nightmare to try and figure out that box so that is the die set and I'll leave links below the video to um, the actual designer's choice die set and try and I'll try and link to as many of the other bits and pieces that I've shown you in this video as well so um, this is what the actual box looks like um, you can see what I mean about this really um, three-dimensional and it really does look like a house to me, a really like a haunted house or something but I really love this kind of um, intricate folding and it even like closes up again so this all folds backwards but then it still closes up so the incense is only sort of being released through these small little decorative um, portions around it which I think is really lovely um, and it's a really cute a different kind of a box. The total height from bottom to the top of the handle is, you can probably tell better than me from up there, yeah, about six and a quarter inches and then the actual base is two inches by one inch so that little base portion is two by one. Um, so it's a decent sized box and I think if you have a big enough Christmas tree you could even hang some of these on a Christmas tree as well, especially if you made them look like a lantern too. I think that would look really lovely. But this is the actual box. This was using the With Love um, panel on there um, and I stuck all the panels on whilst it was flat. You definitely want to do that, especially for all these little fiddly ones in there. Um, and then I, w I thought it looked a little bit too plain, so I actually just came through with some glacier paste and added that all over as well. And I think it just adds a nice sparkly kind of element. And then the closure mechanism, oh I also put um, dream drops while it was flat as well and then left it to dry. So you've got dream drops on the handle and some on the flowers of the panels as well. And then the little closure mechanism is really easy and it opens up quite nice and wide. Although it's a relatively small gift box in there, it opens up really widely. So um, if you were going to give like, you know, split up a box of celebrations and make it look a little bit more fancy, you'd probably get quite a few in there because you can actually, um, you know, push them right up to the top and then close it on them as well. Or um, a knitted gift or... Um, I think a packet of tissues would fit in there so you could do some kind of like a get well soon little present for somebody and have like a packet of tissues and um, some herbal tea bags or something um you know cute little gift ideas like that and then the way that it closes sorry I've got a dog hair stuck to that um the way that it closes is uh, this sort of portion folds in like this and then you keep pushing towards the middle and these two handles will join together and then all you have to do is just pull that tab through and poke that, oh, when it's in the right place, poke that little semicircle into that little portion and then fold the tab down and that makes your beautiful box. And this is my, uh, the one I, I just cut this from white card to just check how it went together. And this is the one I tried to like, kind of draw a house on it. Maybe that window doesn't really work on it, but I 
this is my kind of idea if I had more time um, I would have like tried to make this look really good but you see you can make this into a roof and then this is like extra little turreted roofs and the way these little bits pop up I really think they could be like the rounded topped windows and stuff and you could have one down the side and then I, I was just trying to do like a little bit of extra roof down the front with the the door and stuff but um, I'm sure one of you would make it look way better if you took on this idea but I think I just think it looks really sweet and that could be a really cool uh, trick-or-treating gift for next year as well so um, that was just my playing around with it then and then I've also done these two cards which will be in the sped up video and I just wanted to show how even though these panels are kind of an odd shape because they're specifically made to go on this box you can still use them to create some quite modern funky kind of cards as well I used a little bit of a, a different colour scheme here too I just picked out some papers from my scrap box and I thought these looked really nice together having like the bright pink the sort of tealy turquoise and then the sort of um, coppery or bronzy kind of speciality silk card as well I just think they gave quite a nice colour combination and I was also trying to show how this panel that is actually for the side of the box you can actually snip out the words and then just use them on a card as well if you want to and if you'd cut like uh, two of each of these or maybe no yeah if you'd cut two of each of these you would be able to snip that flower out and snip between the W and the L as well so then you could have them both next to each other to make it even more versatile too so you can really snip into that sentiment and I thought these weird shapes even though they are a strange kind of shape they do fit into each other nicely like this or you could even have put them completely further down but I kind of wanted to get um, sort of five of them on a card um, but I think they go really nicely together, it just gives a, d a completely different look for a card, like where would you buy a die set that is specifically made for card making that gives you that kind of a funky pattern, you know, it's quite nice just to take these weird panel shapes from different 3D boxes and give yourself a really different sort of look, or even just challenge yourself to do it as well. Um, and I've also used the deco edge trimmer along the bottom there to cut a deco edge on the top and bottom of this panel you'll see me just suddenly decide to do that in my sped up video and then I also just added that little strip of pink card on there to sort of tie the pink down to the bottom of the card as well and again I decided to use the deco edge trimmer because I think that looks really nice um, and then this one is just the side panel for the box doing lots of them coming in they kind of look like um, brackets for a gate or something um, and then I've used these little portions that are supposed to be to go in the middle of that panel for the box um, but I just use them sort of on the end of these little bracket kind of pieces and then put a load of the little flowers around as well using the little hearts that fell out of the centre of these ones too and then finally I've just decorated with um, Nouveau drops so I've, done, I've used the Simply White, the Caribbean Tide and the Party Pink colours as well because I thought they went best with the colours of cardstock that I'd used as well and you can see how that little thanks sentiment I could have stuck that onto the box if I wanted to or you can just use it as a sentiment on your card making as well so that is that and I'll get on to showing you the um, construction of how to put the box together as well Okay, so you can see here how I'm going to make this box to completely match these cards. I've used the exact same, um, so like this top piece that I've used here, I've cut it from that kind of bronzy colour and layered it with the blue um, to match so everything coordinates. And where on here where I've used the white decorative panel but backed it with pink, I've done that for the side panels. So everything really goes together. I thought it would make a really nice sort of set, especially if you gave um, this with like the... The thank you card as well I think it would go really nicely together um, I've already completely done one side just to save a little bit of time uh, but I wanted to show you exactly how to put all of this together and where to put the tape and which bits you need to cut off and stuff like that so firstly I'll show you where to put the tape on this so on both of the pieces you want to use like a three millimeter uh, red liner tape or you can use glue as well it's just quicker to use the red liner tape um, you want so on both you want this done with the skinny tape down those side pieces then this is just a 12 millimeter one you can just use more pieces of the the narrower if that's what you've got um, and on this one both of the pieces you want to 
have a piece on the back of this skinny panel at the bottom which makes part of the bottom of the box and then you just need it on the back of one of these large rectangles because this one's going to be the inside of the box so we want it to be on just one of them so that is just that's where you need your adhesive so really really simple for the adhesive then um, you have two of these tabs but you only need one um, and the way you can figure it out is decide which panel you want to be the front so for this one I've actually got for you and enjoy but I liked the enjoy one better so I'm going to do enjoy as the front so I want to leave this one on which one I want to be the front because if you think about it this is going to fold over and latch on the opposite side so you want the latch to be on the back rather than the front so that means on this one we need to um, chop this out so maybe if I fold it backwards it'll be easier you just want to get some sharp scissors and just snip that off like that so you've just got one that's got a handle and one that's actually got the flap in it as well then for folding everything so there are multiple different mountain and valley folds I think the only um, valley folds are the ones that I'll do first so um, a valley fold just means you fold it towards you so we're folding that little skinny glue tab towards us and we're pressing it down with our glide folder or a bone folder or um, a creasing tool as well so both of those little glue tabs you're folding towards you and then on this panel again that is the same piece this is going to join up over here so this is the same piece down here and we also want to fold this one towards us to create a valley fold and you be careful with this little piece here I'm really sorry about the building noises then with the mountain folds you want to fold this whole top piece away from you to create a mountain fold um, being careful not to fold down any of these little tab pieces they're all going to stick up in the final box which makes this cool incense um, kind of look to the box so you want to fold that one down you can use your glide folder on that one as well and then you also want to fold down the or fold away from you the two flaps for the bottom of the box as well the rest of the folds are also folding um, away from you but they're slightly trickier the top ones are easier because they are um, straight folds so these two side ones on either of the either either side of the uh, box panel they're really easy to do the next ones are slightly trickier because you've got this sort of um, the kind of joining but we have already fold this one folded this one to go backwards so it should help uh, with getting this fold nice here so you can see how that is already folding backwards some of these you might just have to pinch with your finger rather than reinforcing them with the glide folder and you can see how that is already bringing that shape together the way they're kind of folding and then the final ones to fold are all of these ones here they are slightly curved or like they're on a, a tapered line so they're much easier to sort of fold in midair um, as well and again you're folding those away from you too so you've got that one going backwards then this piece sort of comes upwards and will stick to the other panel and then this one we've already folded is to go backwards and then the one that we want to fold is folding away from us and it's coming forwards And then the next one so that one's going to fold upwards that one's going to fold backwards and then this is folding upwards so we're going to fold it away from us you can see what I mean about a little bit tricky to get all of these fold lines in but once you've done it once you'll um, immediately realize exactly which ones are supposed to fold what ways to give the actual final box as well Okay, so we've got everything sort of pre-folded now, so the construction is going to be really easy to do because everything will sort of fold into place nicely. Uh, but now we need to stick all of our panels on, so we want to make it look like the one that I've already done. And if you're doing any Nouveau drops and stuff, make sure you decorate everything whilst it's flat before you stick it on. Obviously, you wouldn't want to put a Nouveau drop on whilst the box is standing upright because it could drip down. Um, so I like to do these kind of panels, um, you know, the night before and then make it the next day or if you were doing a lot of them you know you could get all of them ready and then it'll make it a quicker process as well I'm just going to use glue to stick these on to make it a little bit quicker 
So we've got this little triangle which goes in that triangle portion. I did just cut it out of white because of the way I was having this panel on here. I thought it would look quite nice just being in white and then I've stuck the two little flowers layered on top of each other. Then we've got this side panel to go on as well. Again, I've stuck two of those flowers and put a Nevo drop in the centre. Then this top portion. will go on here. And finally, the f well, this is the back panel actually. Okay, so we've got all of our panels on there now, and now we need to stick the two sides of the box together, which again is really simple. All we've got to do is pull the tape off of these two panels from one of the pieces, and then you're just lining up this corner with that um, fold of the glue tab down there, and you want to make sure um, this little piece is lining up too. And then you want to just line up that second glue tab as well and press it into place. And then this one, we can do it this way, um, where you know you, you um, press like this as well. Although we are going to then end up folding this the wrong way. It wouldn't matter because you could just push it back in again. But if you can do it in mid-air, you're just going to save yourself one step of uh, folding a panel the opposite direction again. So we can just take those off and then bring this round and stick it together. And then just make sure it's sort of lining up all the way along that straight edge and press it in place. So we've now got the main basis of the box and it's kind of all over the place because where we've got um, glue tabs joining and stuff, the folds have kind of wanted to pop out in the opposite direction. So we are just going to work with the bottom first and then we'll figure out the top. It's much easier to do it this way. So if you remember with our panels, we stuck tape on three of the panels that make the bottom of the box. And you'll also notice that, you know, if this is completely spread out, how is that panel going to make part of the bottom of the box? Isn't there going to be big holes in it? But that's why we've got all of those fold lines because this actually pushes inwards. You would have seen on the inside of the other box that I showed you, these are actually pushing inwards. Um, and the way this is going to work is we want to fold down the flap of the one that hasn't got the adhesive on. Then we want to take the backing off of one of these side flaps. And we want to take this, we want to line this line of this up with that fold line, but we're also wanting to centralise this um, tab onto here. So we want to push that right up against that fold line, but we also want to make sure it's roughly central on the bottom of the box as well. So that's how you get that, um, you know, the allowance for the, the folded portions to sort of sit in there as well. And then we just do the other side in exactly the same way. So we're folding those in, so it all sort of concertinas together. And then we're just making sure that's central again um, from top to bottom. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it, you know, it, that's just what we're aiming for. And then finally, we have the last one, which we've added the adhesive to. And this will just trap those um, tabs inside to make sure it's really nice and strong. And it also gives um, the bottom of the box some like nice sturdiness because you've trapped the side panels in there so it's not like the box is going to fall open or anything we've actually made it really nice and secure by doing that as well so then we've got the bottom all done and then for the top piece we're just going to as I was showing you on the one that I'd finished that I was opening and closing for you the, the one thing you've got to think about here is all these little pieces we want them to be poking outwards so you might have to go from the inside and just um, check that they're going to pop outwards as we fold these panels in because sometimes they get a little bit stuck but you, you just want to make sure that they're popping upwards you might get them stuck on these end pieces as well so just make sure they're all sort of going properly you can double check it and then open it up again but then you just want to um, push these pieces in so we're basically where all of those little small triangles are we're just like holding there and pushing inwards to get the box to go together 
And then just double checking as we're pushing it together that all these little turrety pieces are poking upwards. And then all you're doing is making sure that one tab goes through the handle of the other one and then locks over into place. And this one I actually did cut that detail into the handle and I've just left it. But you could have cut that small portion of the top of the box and backed each of these to make them a little bit stronger and to have given the colour through the handle as well if you wanted to. So that is how easy it is to put it together. The The fiddliest part is just figuring out the score lines but definitely once you've got one put together and you've got it on your desk, this is why I make like a blank one, I've now drawn all over it, but um, this is why I do this so that you can instantly know exactly how it's supposed to go together and you can figure out um, exactly where all the decorative panels go to sort of know in your head what colour you want them to be. Like. Um, you might want this kind of inset portion to sort of be more invisible so then therefore you wouldn't want to really put the panels on or if you did you wouldn't want to do them in a, a contrasting colour like pink against the white you know you might want to keep them purple on purple so it looks a little bit less evident and stuff so um, I really do recommend just making one out of some scrap white card to begin with um, just to you know for your mind just see exactly how it goes together but that is what the actual box looks like. I also think if you were clever enough and you could be bothered with all the fiddliness, you might actually be able to um, weave some ribbon in and out of these. Um, you know, like so come around the corner, go in this one, back out the middle, you know, and try and weave something in there. Or what I was saying about the gift tag idea, you can actually um, like thread a bit of baker's twine through one of these, through the inside and back out one of these. And then you could have your little tag dangling off there and it also wouldn't get lost or be in the way of the opening mechanism as well. So... I hope you've enjoyed this up close video looking at the exquisite sensor gift box um, and hopefully that little construction was helpful for you as well. I, I do find um, seeing a video is much more helpful than any kind of written instruction so hopefully um, you found that just as useful as well and uh, keep your eyes peeled for the sped up video of these two cards too. And I will see you again in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you watching. And all of the links for um, the die cutting essentials and stuff is below. And have a Merry Christmas too. So bye. <laughs>